Welcome back to chapter 3. Before we start blueprinting the spinning thing, we will go to the meshes we imported before and assign materials we created before. So go ahead and assign materials accordingly to the list you see now. Once you're done, click File, Save All, and close all the material windows away. Now we can create the Blueprint Actor. So go to BP Folder and right click and create actor. And name it BP underscore spinner. Open it and we will first lay out all the components. So let's place in a new scene component. Call it root and make it the new root. Then we need a cube. Call it base and scale it down to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. This will be an anchor for the physics constraints that we will create later. Now click on root and add a static mesh, name it arm1, and assign the arm1 mesh. Then as a child, add an arrow component and name it Impulse Arrow. And drag it down to the tip, minus 80 in Z. Now click on Root and add a static mesh again. Now called Arm to End. Select the mesh again, and then move it down minus 160 in Z. And then as a child, Add three static meshes. One of them is arm to light. Select the mesh. The other one is arm to bar. Select the mesh. And lastly, arm to start. And select the mesh. Now set arm to start to 80 in Z, and also for arm to bar, 80 in Z, and arm to light, just zero out the location. Once you're done, click compile and save. This may be something new to many of you, but we will be using physics constraints, and this is what enables us to create real time physics kinematics. So go ahead and click on root. And let's add a physics constraint. And the first one will be PC underscore base. And control D to duplicate and name it PC underscore joint. Now leave PC base as it is, but for PC joint, move it down to where the two arms meet. Just like that. So five in Y and minus 80 in Z. Before we start setting up the constraints, the arm1 and arm2 end meshes need to have collision meshes in order for the physics constraints to work. So go back to the content browser in the geo folder and open arm1 and give it a box collision. And look, it doesn't have to be accurate, but try to get it as close to what I have here. Scale it down a bit and move to the center of the arm. Save, close it down, and then next open arm to end. Give it a box collision. And save and close it down. Now go back to BP Spinner for arm 1 in the details window, enable simulate physics. And in the constraints, lock the Y position and lock X and Z rotation. By locking the axis that you know won't be changed, the physics constraint usually results in a more stable simulation even when very high forces are applied. Now make sure the collision preset is physics actor and go ahead and repeat this step for the arm to end. Now for arm to end, I will also go to the advanced and set the mass scale to two. Okay, we also need to go to base cube mesh 
and set a custom collision with query only, then object type to physics body, and ignore everything except block physics body. Also set the visibility to off as this will only be used for physics purposes and compile save. Back to physics constraints and we have to set the component names. Now for PC base, we will set the component name one to base and the component name two as arm one. Now you can see that they've become color coded Next for PC joint, name one will now be arm one and name two will be arm two end. These names are case sensitive, so double check that you didn't mistype anything. The next thing to do is go down to angular limits and lock swing one motion and twist motion, but keep swing two free. So what this does is that when forces are applied to the rigid bodies, they'll be able to freely move around only in the y-axis. Let's do the same for PC base. And additionally, since base and arm one are overlapping, go up and click on disable collision to stop the rigid bodies from exploding. Now at this moment, this will have no friction, so for a bit of realism, we have to apply some rotational stiffness to the constraints. So go down to angular mode section and select drive mode to twist and swing. And in target velocity, enable swing and set the strength to 10. Now the strength value determines how much friction there is in the rotation. So let's go ahead and repeat these steps for the other one. For demonstration purposes, let's go to the construction script and drag in PC base and drag out of it to set angular velocity target. Make a vector and set Y to 1.5. Compile and save and go to the viewport and click simulate. Now, if it doesn't look like this, go back and make sure that you didn't miss anything in the prior steps. Now that we know that our constraints are set up, go back to the construction script, delete these nodes, compile and save, and in the next chapter, we will start to use OSC values to drive the impulse.